Hello, senior parents. I'm Laura Keither, one of the high school counselors here at Hortonville High School. Um, can you believe that your student is already a senior in high school? I'm sure it's not that long ago you remember them being freshmen and you're not quite sure how they're already seniors getting ready to go out into the world. Um, we thought we would put together some information that is helpful for you and your seniors. And we understand that all students have different plans for after high school. Um, so this information is meant to be helpful for um, students who are going every direction. Um, we're gonna talk about military, technical college, four universities, and those cool things that we have available for seniors this year. Some people that are important for you to know about, so myself, as I said, Laura Keither, high school counselor for students last names A through G and T. We also have Mrs. Chevremont, who has students last name H through O, and Mrs. Winch, who has students last name P through Z, except for T. Um, also, we have our registrar is Mrs. Julie Petrie, and our admin assistant is Jennifer Van Ass. In. Helping me with these slides will be Allie Winch. Some important things to know, students need at least 24 credits to graduate. Um, when dropping or adding classes, they need to verify graduation requirements with their counselors. Um, and this becomes really important when we roll into spring semester. And then do not make changes to your senior schedule after applications have been submitted. If this is the case, you're going to need to um, alert the colleges that you've applied to that you've changed your schedule um, as this can affect admissions decisions. All students are required to complete a minimum of 36 hours of service learning or volunteer hours by April 15th of their senior year. This date would change for students who are intending on graduating early. If students are intending on graduating early, they would need to have their service hours in and completed at the time they turn in their application, which the deadline is December 1st. Hours are logged on gotransio.com. And if you have any questions about setting up that account, how hours are approved, and if there's any concerns that you have on your end, um, please reach out to our Youth Service Learning Coordinator, Katie Proetti. Her email address is here below, and you can reach out to her at any time with questions that you have. If your child is intending on going to a technical college or a four-year university after high school, now is the time for them to be applying. Some things that they might want to have on hand before they start the application process would be a printout of their transcript so that they know the classes that they're currently enrolled in and classes that they've previously taken. They'd also want a listing of their clubs and activities, the dates that they were involved in any positions that they held within those clubs or activities. They can also have their amount of service hours they have completed and information about employment. Sometimes all this information is covered in a resume that they ha may have created in the Past, or if they have all this together in another document, it's just helpful to have on hand. UW and four-year universities do require an essay statement to be completed. In English 11 or in junior English, students have the opportunity to complete either a resume and cover letter or answer the essay prompts for four-year universities. So they may already have this done. If not, it's something that they can complete and work with their English teacher or their counselor to make sure that it looks great before they submit it on their application. ACT scores are also a part of the application process. Please check with universities to determine if they are test optional this year or not. Transcripts will need to be sent to colleges and universities, and transcripts can be sent through Zello. We do have some information later on on the specifics of sending transcripts through Zello. Some universities require letters of recommendation as part of their application process, and we do have a form in the counseling office that students can fill out and make multiple copies of if needed, and asking for letters of recommendation from employers, teachers, or other trusted adults in their life. Um, like we said, please refer to the college websites for specific admission requirements regarding GPA, class rank, ACT, and if they have any additional information needed for the application process. On this slide, we'll specifically be talking about early action versus early decision. Sometimes when you're applying to a four-year college, this is a question um, that pops up on the application. So the difference between early action and early decision is that early decision 
um, plans are binding. And what that means is a student who is accepted when they select early decision means that they have to go and attend that college. So if they apply to other colleges but make their plan early decision specifically, let's say to UW-Madison, um, if they applied early decision and they get accepted at UW-Stevens Point and UW-Madison, it means that they will be attending UW-Madison. Early action plans are non-binding. So what this means is students receive an earlier response to their application, but do not have to commit to the college until the normal reply date of May 1st. So um, the, there's also regular decision, which just means that you'll also find out later on. So if you did early action, you'll find out earlier. Um, if you do early decision, decision that means that that is a binding um, contract that you are saying that if you get accepted, you are for sure going to that university. There are many ways to apply to four-year colleges. Um, specifically in the state of Wisconsin, we have the University of Wisconsin system. If you click on this, it's hyperlinked and will bring you specifically to the application process for the UW schools. We also have the Wisconsin private colleges, again, linked. So if you um, have a student that's interested in one of our private colleges in the state of Wisconsin, maybe Concordia or Carroll, um, you can click this and it will bring you specifically to their applications. Um, if you're going out of state, we suggest that you check the school's website and apply through them. And then there's also the Common App um, application, which you can also hyperlink so you can click on this and apply to colleges as well. If you and your child are interested in learning more about colleges that are available for them, please check out these two resources. The National College Fair will be virtual this year, and we also have the Wisconsin Education Fair listed at the dates and locations below. Don't forget about our technical colleges. The state of Wisconsin has numerous technical colleges scattered throughout the state, and these technical colleges are top-notch institutions. The one closest to us is Fox Valley Technical College, but there are many other technical colleges throughout the state of Wisconsin. If your student is interested in a technical college, have them apply by either clicking to the Fox Valley link or the Wisconsin Technical Colleges link. Don't forget, once they have applied to the institution, they still need to um, send their transcripts through Zello. Again, Zello is hyperlinked on this page if they need to go to that website specifically. Fox Valley Technical College will be hosting their open house this year at the date listed on this slide. It's a great opportunity for you and your student to attend the open house because they will waive the application fee. Also, it's great because you can tour the campus, meet with teachers and students, and also get in some labs and find out if it's a good fit for your student or not. You would need to register in advance, so please visit the Fox Valley Tech website and search for their open house to find the link to register for this. As stated earlier, requesting transcripts are needed for four-year institutions as well as technical colleges. On this slide, you'll see the big click here in red. Um, and when you do this, it will click bring you to a step-by-step -step guide on how to request your transcripts from Zello. So if you have a student that is struggling, this is a really great resource for them to refer back to. It takes them step by step to how to go about requesting transcripts. If for some reason they don't remember their username and password for Zello, um, have them reach out to their counselors. We'd be more than happy to help them. If your child is interested in joining the military, make sure that they connect with one of our military recruiters when they are in our building. They will be rotating through Wednesdays and a Thursday of each, each month during commons and lunch periods. The Army will be coming on the first Wednesday of the month. The U.S. Air Force will be coming on the second Wednesday of each month. The Marine Corps will be here on the third Wednesday of each month. And the Navy will be here on the fourth Wednesday of each month. The National Guard will be attending commons and lunch periods on the second Thursday of each month. If your student is interested in meeting with one of our military recruiters privately, let us know and we can set up a meeting for them. 
We've mentioned Zello several times in sending transcripts, but we also have a system set up within Zello where students can do some career exploration, take some interest inventories, and research colleges and institutions or additional training after high school that's going to be helpful for them. So not only does Zello send transcripts, but it does all those wonderful things. All of our students have access to Zello. Their username will always be capital letters H-O-R-T dash their student ID number and their password would be something that they would have picked. So if they use the same password for everything, have them check that first. If they don't remember, have them reach out to us and we can reset it on our end. This is a great resource for students who at this point in time maybe don't know what they want to do um, and want some more information, but also a great place for them to store some information as far as a resume, cover letter, um, some service hours that they've done, just a great warehouse of information for them. You might be wondering if there are any tests coming up for your current senior this year. And the answer is there aren't any official tests that the school is going to provide to current seniors, but there are tests that they might want to look at taking again or signing up for based on what they want to do after high school. So for example, if your student is interested in attending a four-year university or a junior college, they have already taken the ACT with us their junior year. Sometimes students choose to take the ACT again if their score isn't where they wanted it to be. Um, sometimes if they take it again and their score is higher, it'll bump them up into a new financial aid category or a different scholarship that they can qualify for, um, or admission requirements want a higher ACT score. If your student wants to take the ACT again because of one of those reasons, they can go to actstudent.org and sign up to take another test. Um, they have already taken the test with us, so if you're wondering how do they register for it, if you're getting blocked on some of those things, the ECT website is going to ask, have they taken the ECT before? And you would answer yes, because they took that with us their junior year. The next question is, have they registered already for the ECT? If they have only taken the ACT with us, the answer to that would be no, because we registered the students for the ACT they took their junior year. So um, answer those two questions, and then it will help uh, create a profile for them to register for it on their own. If your student is interested in going to technical colleges, technical colleges will ask that students take the AccuPlacer. Um, AccuPlacer in our area can be done at Fox Valley Tech um, and they can register online for that. Although depending on how high students score on the ACT, uh, they may not need to take the AccuPlacer. The Fox Valley Tech or local technical colleges will accept ACT scores if they're high enough. Also keep in mind, if your student is interested in joining the military, the military will ask that they complete the ASVAB. We will be hosting the ASVAB here on February 10th at 8 a.m. Students who are interested can sign up in the counseling office. The FAFSA, or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, is something that we highly recommend that all of our families complete for their students who are intending on going to technical colleges or four-year universities. The application will become available for current seniors on October 1st, and they will be filing for the 22-23 school year looking at 2020 taxes. They will be looking at student taxes in addition to their guardian or their parents' taxes. Now, if you're wondering, oh my gosh, what is all this information about? We'll be hosting a FAFSA parent night. Um, this will be virtual this year at the date listed below. And we have partnered with Fox Valley Tech's financial aid office to get that information. Now, we understand that everybody's income and financial situation is different and unique. So if you have any questions, you can certainly reach out to any financial aid office at any college or university. So if you know that your student is intending on going Going to a specific college, you can reach out to that college financial aid office and speak to a representative there who may be able to answer the questions more thoroughly for you. The financial aid parent night that we will be hosting, again, will be virtual and pre-recorded, so you can check that out anytime that works for you and refer back to it as you're completing the application. We get a lot of questions about scholarships and something that we want you to know is that there's so much free money out there for you and for your student that you really should be applying and spending and dedicating time towards completing those applications. Now there are three locations that you can find scholarship information. The first I would recommend checking out would be our scholarship page underneath the academics tab of the high school website. We have a whole listing of information there for you, including information about the local scholarship application. 
application. That application deadline is Friday, February 25th. And the thing that's really cool about that application is that it's one application that applies you for multiple local scholarships. Uh, so a lot of bang for your student's buck in filling out that application because it qualifies them for multiple scholarships. Um, another website that we'd like to refer you to is your college website. Now your college is going to have information about scholarships for you, whether they are merit-based or need-based. And you can work with your college and university to determine what scholarships are the appropriate ones for you to apply to. Sometimes they have you fill out a separate application, and sometimes it's just your application for admission that then applies you for those scholarships. The third location is going to be search engines. Now, there's going to be multiple websites out there, and some of them are going to charge you money for it. We always advise that the information is out there for free, so please don't pay for it. One website that we know is free is called FastWeb, and it is a search engine that allows you to create a profile about your student, and it will find the scholarships for you for free. So. Take a look at those websites, the information that we have on our high school website. Reach out to us if you have any questions, and please encourage your student to apply for the local scholarship in February. A great opportunity for students during second semester of their senior year now is that they can take college credit classes on the campuses or virtually, um, and we will pay for books and tuition. So the programs are called the Early College Credit Program, or ECCP, and that is through the UW system, and Start College Now, or SCN, through Fox Valley Tech. Um, it is formerly known as Youth Options, so if you have some older students who took advantage of the Youth Options Program, it has just now been renamed. Um, again, students can take classes through UW system or Fox Valley Tech, there's an application that they need to complete and the application deadline is coming up here on October 1st. So if your student would like to take advantage of that for their spring semester, um, have them come and make an appointment with us. We can either meet virtually or in person briefly uh, to talk to them about the application to look at specific classes that might work well for them. Things to keep in mind are that if a student is hoping to take a class that we offer here but is also offered at the Tech, we would not approve for them to go to the tech or through UW system. Um, we would ask that they stay here. Um, also, we're looking for students who have um, followed a pathway and maybe have exhausted all options for classes that we offer here. So, you know, if they have taken um, a variety of science classes and now are looking for more, or if they've taken a variety of social studies classes and now are looking for more um, in-depth and more rigorous classes, that's really what this program is designed for. Um, if your student is asking to take, you know, for example, business classes, but they haven't taken any business classes here yet, we would ask that they take some business classes um, earlier on. Um, so great opportunity. Again, we pay for books and tuition. Um, students get released from the school day and we adjust their schedule accordingly to make sure that they have time to both complete their graduation requirements here and take some college classes that are going to enrich their day um, and transfer to colleges or universities that they plan on going to later. Hortonville High School offers a variety of classes that offer college credit just by students completing it here at the high school, and that program is called CAP. Um, you may have heard from your students there's CAP English, CAP FIED, CAP Spanish, there's also CAP Accounting, CAP German, a variety of other classes in there as well that your student might be enrolled in and hopefully completed the CAP paperwork so that they can receive both high school and college credit. Um, it's a great opportunity through UW Oshkosh and Lakeland University that our kids can take the class physically in our building. Building. Our teachers are considered adjunct professors or professors in completing the class, and the grade that the student receives here at high school is also then starting a college transcript for them. Uh, some of the classes that the kids take are classes that they would have to take at the college level anyways. For example, English 101 is typically an English class that most college freshmen take, so by completing that class here, it opens up their schedule then their freshman year for other English classes or other classes that they might need. Students are also completing that at a reduced tuition rate. Uh, so it's about $100 per college credit, whereas if you remember back to your college days or if you have any older students, uh, currently the, the going rate for the UW system is about $300 per one credit. So again, reduced tuition rate for students here, a great program. If your student is interested in that, have them stop down the counseling office and we can take a look at their schedule and make sure that they're set to go to have that in there. 
Some other odds and ends that might be helpful for you to keep in mind and be knowledgeable about for your seniors is that they can graduate early. So if they have met their graduation requirements by the end of their first semester, so typically for seniors, it's a credit of English and a credit of social studies, maybe another FIAD or personal finance in there. But if they have met all their graduation requirements by the end of their first semester, they can complete an application that's due December 1st and they can graduate early. Now, part of that application is that they are required to submit a letter stating that they're either going to be working full-time, going to college full-time, or joining the military. So they would want to start working on that now and planning for it. Um, again, they can stop in and talk to us, make an appointment, or meet with us virtually to talk about what graduation requirements do they still have and if they meet these requirements. Um, students can also apply for early release or late start on their schedule. Um, so they can come in late first hour or leave early um, at the end of the day. Um, I know with this, you unique schedule we have this year, uh, seniors already have the opportunity to leave, but still something that you might see on their schedule and that explains what it is. So they, if they are in good academic standing, can leave during those times. If you have any follow-up questions or you need to reach out to us for any reason, please feel free to do so. You can email us at our email address listed here below. Um, you can also call us in the counseling office at 779-7934 or have your students reach out to us in Canvas. Have a great rest of your night.